So last class we were seeing about uh, various uh, bulk forming processes. These are the things which we'll be learning. Okay. So we'll be learning about forging, rolling, um, extrusion. Okay. So drawing, all these things we'll be learning. So before we move on to learning all those stuff, we should know what are the other forming uh, techniques. That is, uh, apart from bulk deformation or bulk forming process, what are the other uh, things that are available? The other one, which is closely related to forming, is sheet metal forming. Uh, so sheet metal forming is directly compared with uh, now bulk forming. So what is the definition? If you see bulk forming, a bulk formation or bulk forming is the metal forming operation in which a significant change in shape occur via plastic deformation in metallic parts. So this is the definition. I cannot do any modification on the definition. So bulk deformation is the metal forming operation in which a significant change in shape occurs via plastic deformation in metallic parts. Whereas when you compare with sheet metal forming, sheet metal forming is a metal forming operation in which the geometry of a piece of sheet undergoes modification upon the addition of a force. Okay, You are applying a force and changing the shape of a sheet. Okay, you, you can also uh, cut the sheet or change the shape of the sheet. All those things can be done. So if you see the ratio between the volume, area to volume, okay, area to volume, uh, the ratio of workpiece is very high. Okay, so if you if you if you have a denominator of volume and if you have a numerator area, the uh, workpiece uh, the ratio is higher. Okay, that is in the bulk deformation. When you compare with uh, sheet metal forming, the area to volume ratio is less. What does it mean? The thickness of the workpiece is very, very less. Okay. When you, uh, when you tell it is a sheet, you, you should know what is the dimension. Maybe 1, one mm thickness or 1.5 mm thickness or 1.65 uh, mm thickness or 2 mm thickness. Maximum it can go up to 2.5 mm thickness. Beyond that, when you consider then that is not a sheet. But if you have a large area, okay, say for example, you have a 100 kilometer sheet into 100 kilometer sheet, that is X and Y, you have 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer. If the thickness, say, is 10 mm, then it is also considered as sheet. So that is the reason we give with respect to a ratio, that is area to volume ratio. So area to volume ratio should be very low. Area should be higher, volume should be lower. Then in that case, it is considered as sheet. If the area to volume is higher, that means that volume is more and area is less, then it is considered as bulk. Okay. Say, for example, you take, uh, maybe you would have seen your uh, dusters, okay, duster, the board dusters, white board duster or black board duster, that is a bulk material. But whereas, the board itself is a sheet. Okay, the board, if you consider the black board or the white board, if you consider, it is a sheet. But whereas the duster, what you use is a bulk material because the volume to area ratio is very high. And in that board, the volume to area, area to volume ratio is low. So that is a comparison. If you just see with your naked eyes and if you want to compare, this is the best example. Okay, initial shape. It can be a billet, it can be a rod, it can be a slab. Okay, so that is considered as uh, the initial shape. But for sheet, the initial shape itself is only a sheet. So with that sheet, you are going to construct or make some more modifications to that sheet and make it to a component. Uh, say for another example, what you can see is the cabinets. Okay, the file cabinets or your uh, uh, almirahs in at home your cot, okay, steel cot, your steel table, okay, all these things are made of sheets. The sheets, plain sheets are bent, it is cut, it is, uh, it is tapered, all those shapes are made on the sheet. Even your utensils, the ones you, which you use in the kitchens, kitchen, your vessels, your tumblers, your plates, all these things are made of sheets. So these are called, are, these are classified under sheet metal forming whereas if you consider bulk metal forming your uh, 
maybe your um, what to say um, the engineering components okay the engineering components like uh, maybe uh, flywheel connectors okay flywheels uh, your uh, your uh, um, crankshafts all those things are forged components forged components in the sense bulk formation has been done on that particular component so those are bulk components so area to volume ratio so it increases considerably and no significant increase in the area to volume ratio okay so when you consider uh, working on that using a bulk material you start working on it you are going to see a considerable increase in the volume area to volume ratio but whereas the sheet 2 mm thickness sheet if you take and work on it it will be 2 mm thickness till the end okay you you take your uh, file cabinet or your uh, almira at home or cot steel cot you check the thickness the thickness will be the same before manufacturing after manufacturing both places there is no change there is no change in the thickness maybe at the places where it is bending or where it is notched there can be a slight change in the dimension the thickness can slightly vary but otherwise there is no significant change Sh shape and cross section there is an appreciable change in the shape and cross section of the uh, bulk deformation okay maybe you take it as a billet or a rod and you make it into some other component the shape and size everything the cross section everything changes but there is no significant change in the sheet metal fabrication and elastic deformation permanent plastic deformation is higher in uh, than the elastic deformation okay where that is Uh, you know what is elastic deformation elasticity means when a metal or when any material is ex, uh, applied with some certain load up until a certain extent the material is under elastic deformation meaning when you remove the load it retains or comes back to its original shape and size but when it is considered as plastic deformation because of this applied load it deforms to a certain extent and it did not it will not have the ability to return back to the original shape and size that is called the plastic deformation so in elast in bulk formation you will see more of permanent deformation or more of plastic deformation than the elastic deformation but whereas in sheet metal you will see more of elastic uh, deformation than of plastic deformation or it is comparable it is both somewhat equal okay uh, some sheets after you apply load they slightly bend and they return back to its original shape and size in some cases they slightly deform and uh, retain the position or retain the same shape after deformation so that also is possible so these are the differentiation between bulk deformation and sheet metal forming i'll just give you a glimpse of what are these sheet metal forming then we'll move on to the syllabus okay so the processes you can see blanking blanking is nothing but removing a small portion of material from a big uh, portion of big sheet okay big uh, sheet you just blank out a small thing so you can see here there is a die okay you keep the plate on it and you just apply a force so small portion of this is blanked out so that is called blanking and deep drawing deep drawing comes in two categories both in uh, sheet metal fabrication and in bulk fabrication so sheet metal fabrication you can see thin sheet is kept and a die is pressed against it and you can see a small cup like shape you can achieve redrawing okay redrawing the same component is kept and again further it is drawn so that a deeper or a longer uh, tube kind of structure is made and again ironing is nothing but uh, you are going to shape it off okay shape it off that is the thickness of the wall is going to become thinner okay the thickness of the wall is going to be thinner that is called ironing so ironing you have ironing ring is there that ring is pressed against the die the tool will or the punch will move inside making it slightly elongated as well as the thickness is reduced and doming is another process where you can see this kind of a dome is made you can remember so from this cross section to this what it happens is from a cross section of sheet it becomes a uh, soft drink can okay maybe a coke can or maybe uh, some kind of soft drink can you can make it so you can see step by step process so after this blanking is done 
and uh, blanking after blanking deep drawing is done after deep drawing redrawing is done then ironing is done then doming doming is you can see this kind of a shape you can achieve you can see the die next is necking okay necking in the sense at the end at the end of the portion small shape this kind of a shape to convert into a neck is made okay there are spinning tools okay there are spinning tools which apply some pressure and this kind of a shape is made then seaming seaming is nothing but the edge will be sharp here so it should be bent so that it will not damage the fingers uh, those who are handling the um, can so it is just bent and it is pressed hard inside so that it becomes uh, a can okay uh, a soft drink can so all these things come under sheet metal forming process okay in bulk forming process uh, you have uh, various classifications one is rolling process another one is forging process then the third one is extrusion the fourth one is wire and bar drawing process so these are the four processes that are already available just a minute okay so these are the four processes that are available rolling forging extrusion wire and bar drawing wire and bar drawing okay so these are the four processes we will see one by one uh, yeah so before we go into the processes we should know what is uh, hot working and cold working okay so considering the process bulk forming process um, there are two ways you can uh, deform a material uh, can anyone know i mean can anyone tell what is deformation deform deformation can anyone tell what is deformation because that word if you are not remembering certain words no change in dimension sir change in dimension change in shape very good i don't know who answered i did not see the screen but those answered uh, appreciations so changing in shape and size is called deformation okay so if you want to deform a material okay you have to make some deformation in a material okay there are two energy that is required one is a thermal energy and one another one is a mechanical energy that is a force or a pressure okay so this thing yesterday we we are discussing about that okay when the temperature is there your pressure applied is less and as i said when your temperature is more sorry when your temperature is more the pressure applied is less when your temperature is less the pressure applied is more it is inversely proportional based on that they have classified into two types of uh, forming process one is hot working another one is cold working so in hot working you apply some temperature to the material then start working on it then start changing its dimensions shape and size but in cold working you do it below the recrystallization temperature what does it mean below the recrystallization temperature again this recrystallization word do anyone know it can you tell what is recrystallization recrystallization anyone knows the word meaning i i can just hear yes or no at least yes so i can explain yeah yeah but not very sure uh, even if you are not very sure you can just try to explain so that i'll know how much you have understood you can try to explain what is recrystallization even with the figure that is there on the top you can just uh, assume something and you can talk so making the crystal into liquid liquid form and then uh, heating up heating it up so so that impure material goes impure thing i just want to know what is this word recrystallization means 
recrystallization means what i'll just explain simple very simple okay any material any material you take you cut it into half or you can just polish the surface of the material keep it under a microscope and see uh, have you done an experiment like that in the lab any time seeing a material surface using a microscope did you ever done have you ever done that anyone no sir no so so that is a problem now because of pandemic you are not having this laboratory and you are not knowing what is uh, there on a surface okay i'll tell you when you cut a material and see or even any any material you take you just polish it nicely okay you should have like mirror kind of finish without any scratch you should polish there are procedures for that okay it's not a very difficult procedure every mechanical engineer should go through this particular lab so that to understand the procedure of polishing a sample okay so you polish it nicely with your emery sheet and maybe disc polisher with uh, diamond paste okay 2 micron 1 micron diamond paste you have to just polish it mechanically you can do it uh, there is a machine that is available which you can do or you can also use your hand and slowly do the process then you have to apply some etchants on the surface where you have polished so that the impurities when you are polishing there will be some impurities getting inside the surface of the material that is removed and the microstructure is visible uh, if you remember material science and engineering subject or materials engineering subject or materials science uh, subject whatever you studied about materials you would have studied about crystallography first unit first chapter is about crystallography or even during your 12th standard you might have studied about body centered cubic structure face centered cubic structure hexagonal closely packed structure uh, in short if you know if you can remember bcc hcp fcc do you remember that yes sir yes yeah. yes sir very good so these are the crystallographic structures meaning the atoms are arranged in a specific fashion every material has its own fashion of arranging its atoms okay in the previous section in the previous chapter we studied about casting all the material when you do a casting okay the the atoms they are not in a fixed location when it becomes molten metal when it is in liquid form the atoms are uh, just they are they are not controlled they are not kept in one location they are just moving across that's why it becomes liquid but once it starts solidification the atoms they start crystallizing or they start becoming solid once they become solid the arrangement they will remember its own arrangement like how we know suppose we go uh, to a foreign land if you see an indian we immediately align to them and we start talking to them like that they remember their crystallographic structure say for example you take aluminum it's a, it's a bcc fcc structure uh, they know how to arrange themselves okay they, they they nobody teaches them to arrange in fcc structure but it by nature itself it arranges itself in a fashion okay in the fcc structure fashion okay now this arrangement or after solidification this arrangement does not happen in one location because if you see a casting lot of material is mold, uh, melted and poured inside so this nucleation happens or the solidification starts in various places every everywhere it starts in not in its own orientation orientation in the sense one fellow will be starting to attract the nearby atom solidify it okay the another in another place another atom will solidify and start looking for one more atom to join it and it will build its own direction okay it one fellow will be facing east another fellow will be facing west another fellow will be facing north another fellow will be facing south one fellow will be facing northeast like that every every uh, solidified atom will start building its structure building its crystallographic structure that is fcc or bcc in its own direction when the two direction uh, meets they cannot further move into the other direction suppose uh, in a classroom itself if you take uh, you will see 
uh, uh, some people from coming from kerala some people coming from andhra some people coming from tamil nadu like that there are different groups of people okay they are coming to a, together to a, inside a class but once you come inside a class if you if one fellow starts okay i am tamil okay i just go and uh, talk to another tamil person and start building a friendship like that i start building and if you see a group of people in maybe two or three benches will be only tamil people because they will be sitting together and chatting and making fun and in another place you will see a group of kerala people sitting and they will not easily mingle initially okay maybe in the future they may mingle and they become very good friends i have a lot of friends in all the languages all the states but otherwise initially if you see they will not easily mingle okay they will not easily uh, talk to each other or mingle with each other okay so that is the way these crystallographic structures also they will not mingle with the different direction different orientation atoms okay a group of atoms in facing south a group of atom facing northeast they will not mingle among each other they will form class and class they will they will form into group of atoms okay they they will form into a small group uh, like it may not be exactly spherical but in, in an irregular shaped fashion they start building so if you see this i can and my you can see the arrow arrow mark you can see this all these single grains okay are different orientation of atoms these are called the this is called the microstructure these are called the grains okay these are called the grains each grain will have a few number of atoms maybe 100 atoms or 200 atoms we don't know but they will be facing in one direction this this will be facing in another direction okay but fcc structure the structure will not change human being will not change but their languages only change their destination or their source only changes okay so like that the fcc will not change but the orientation towards which direction they are facing that alone will change because of that they form grains okay these are the grains and when you take an image using a microscope you will find this as the uh, microstructure that is called the microstructure generally if you see there will be grains the grains are nothing but crystal orientation separate orientation of crystals uh, and you can see that okay and you will also see boundaries grain boundaries in the sense where these two directional group of atoms meet that place is left vacant okay it is not completely vacant it's it's a very small void which is very very negligible but you can see a mark or a boundary there that is called the grain boundary okay now coming to recrystallization this is called crystallization okay the process now what happens what we discussed is crystallization now what is recrystallization at certain temperature this bond okay this bond between this orientation and this orientation starts to wear out okay like for example first year you people are only kerlite separately andrite separately and tamil nadu separately but when you move on to the second semester slowly because of some reason you start talking among the other groups okay now what happens a few group i mean a few fellows from tamil group may go and talk to kerala friends and they become separate group of uh, friends okay and maybe a few from kerala few from tamil nadu and few from andhra they become one group and they become a new uh, group of friends like that this is called recrystallization for that there should be some catalyst okay something something should be there to Uh, remove this bond between this language group and make into into an integrated uh, group so maybe because of exam because because of uh, uh, this uh, maybe andhra group is good in mathematics so tamil nadu people they wanted to go and learn mathematics from them so they move out of their own group and so this is kind of pressure this is kind of catalyst here the catalyst is the temperature you apply some temperature and what happens is they start to move out of their own comfort zone or their own orientation and start building a new crystal with a new orientation so that is called recrystallization so the, for that you need certain amount of temperature this temperature is not fixed it is different for different material for aluminum the recrystallization temperature is around 250 degrees celsius because i have been working on aluminum i know all these values but if i if you ask me about titanium i may not know because i have never worked on titanium 
so if you are starting to work on titanium you will also understand about titanium so you cannot expect a material scientist to know everything okay uh, it is about learning things for what it is required okay so here for aluminum 250 degree celsius it, it becomes a recrystallization temperature so if you apply some temperature that temperature if you again add to that temperature some amount of force then the material will recrystallize and become something like this okay more grains may be refined grains these are refined grains this is large grain this is smaller grain which is called as refined grains here you can see elongated grains the grains getting elongated because of the application of pressure all these things can happen just because of this recrystallization temperature okay now you understood if there is any doubt you can ask me now we can again move forward if you understood what is recrystallization temperature this this word you know recrystallization uh, comes in many places and uh, it's one of the common questions asked in interviews if you are becoming a core engineer they will ask what is a recrystallization temperature and if you know what is recrystallization all those things they will be asking okay so this is one of the important words in terms of material scientists this recrystallization word many places everywhere you will hear this word recrystallization so you should understand that's why i gave you an explanation with some anecdote some example so that you will easily remember you can just relate it to your friends and remember what is crystallization and what is recrystallization is it okay you have any doubts in that no sir Every, yeah no sir no sir. yeah okay right one one of you told there is no doubt fine okay now this is hot working when you slightly heat it up above the recrystallization temperature and start working on it uh, moreover at this temperature the material will become little softer because the atoms are ready to move from its original position okay so when they are ready to move then the metal becomes slightly softer it is plastically deformable okay that is another condition of uh, heating a material but in cold working this recrystallization the temperature is below the recrystallization sometimes they, they slightly heat it up sometimes they work on the room temperature itself but you see the grains will not recrystallize into smaller grains see here the grains are have become very smaller but here the grains are just elongated now if i give you two samples okay if i give you two sample uh, two material in your hand and both are uh, made out of some forging operation or from some rolling operation or some forming operation i give you bulk forming operation something is done on that materials two materials and if i ask you to identify which is cold worked which is hot worked what you have to do you just polish the sample keep it in the microscope both the samples and see what is the microstructure if the microstructure is very very orderly arranged like this okay a smaller size maybe if it is orderly arranged then it is called as the material is identified as hot worked material if you see the cold worked material the grain size would not have recrystallized and made this kind of structure it would have elongated this kind of elongated structures you can see but the grain size will not change it is like you take a chapati dough and just press it with a your chakla bale and your rolling pin and rolling board the shape only changes whereas the texture will not change okay the grain just gets elongated but it is not recrystallized because there is no temperature applied at room temperature or below the recrystallization temperature the material microstructures will not change but for this you may have to apply huge load okay because there is no temperature you have to apply huge load to deform the material but here the load required is less because you have applied the uh, heat and the reason why it becomes plastic i mean easily deformable is because the <coughs> the atoms they loosen up the atoms they lose loosen up and they are ready to change its crystallographic structure so the load required is less in hot working the load required is more in cold working so if you compare it hot working is done above recrystallization uh, cold working is done below recrystallization temperature grain refinement takes place in hot working grain structure is distorted that is the size will not change only it gets elongated or distorted 
uh, it it changes its uh, di uh, dimension but not the size i mean it's only the shape changes sorry the shape changes but not the dimension the overall volume will not change of the grain structure okay impurities and porosities are removed because uh, at uh, an elevated temperature the atoms they are ready to dislodge from their original position and make it into a new new uh, grain orientation so if there is a void if there is porosity inside you have read about porosity in the previous section in the casting process so those kind of impurities and porosities are removed they are just uh, taken out when you do hot working but in cold working they remain as such only thing is the again the shape will slightly change Even instead of having a spherical uh, porosity it will be an elongated porosity and that will be slightly detrimental to the property of the material the residual stresses are eliminated because you apply temperature generally when you apply temperature the residual stresses are eliminated but in cold working they actually mount okay they are not eliminated but residual stresses mount uh, extra extra stresses induced inside residual stresses induced in the material again that is difficult for some reason some some properties may be affected the rapid oxidation and scaling occurs because at elevated temperature the material reacts with the oxygen in the atmosphere and the scaling will come oxidation will come uh, the material becomes uh, rust the rust formation happens that is called oxidation in co common term we call it as rust but in technical term we call it as oxidation again this terminology is very very common uh, you may know only the rust uh, if you keep the iron in uh, in the air rust forms okay what is this rust the iron reacts with oxygen and becomes iron oxide so that is called uh, rust we call it as rust okay oxidation is the process oxidation is the right word as a technical as a mechanical engineer you should not further tell that sir it has rusted you, what you should say is it has oxidized the material has oxidized so that is the terminology you have to use from now onwards at least from today onwards stop using the word rust and start using the word oxidation okay so that way you just build your uh, professional technical knowledge okay professional way of expressing some things you can just use these kind of words so that people will know that you know something about the mechanical engineering you know something about materials okay so start stop using the word rust even to your very common friends you can start using the word oxidation so that you will also impart the knowledge to somebody else okay that this is oxidation because of oxidation the iron oxide or whatever oxide that forms on the surface they will not just stick on to the original material they will try to remove or come out of the material that is called scaling okay scaling is nothing but chipping off of oxidized material at elevated temperature so that is called scaling so this will result in poor surface finish okay you will have some small dents and other stuff maybe you should do some polishing grinding all those things to make it look good but in cold working since there is no temperature involved oxidation will not happen immediately but if you keep it in air for some uh, few days rust may come but immediately it will not be there and your surface finish will be very very good excellent okay you should say excellent if you do cold working okay close dimensional tolerances cannot be maintained because you know the process when you heat the material expands when you cool down the material contracts so at an elevated temperature you may get some dimension and you will think that that is the correct dimension but once the material cools down it slightly contracts and what happens the dimension you may be expecting 10 mm you there will be only 9.5 mm okay so close dimensional tolerances cannot be maintained so for that you have to work really hard on the tool and die but in cold working you can maintain close dimensional tolerances because you are working in room temperature no contraction no expansion so it is done with very close dimensional tolerance tooling and handling costs are more the reason is you need to have a material which can withstand high temperature the tools that can withstand high temperature so material properties have to be very good if you want a high material property the cost of metal is going to be very high say uh, recently we manufactured one tool and die for a process uh, the cost of the material is 145 rupees per kilogram now we are going to use the same kind of uh, process for an elevated temperature for a higher temperature that is the material we are changing so higher temperature 
now we are going for a material which is 2500 rupees per kilogram so the property is very high so the cost of the metal is also high so that is the reason your tooling and handling cost is going to be very high but whereas in cold working the tooling and handling cost is less and the me mechanical properties such as toughness ductility and elongation are improved whereas uh, here in cold working the tensile strength hardness and fatigue is improved whereas the elongation is decreased and reduction in area is also decreased so these are the uh, comparison between hot working and cold working any doubts in this any doubts no sir okay no, sir. now coming to the first process i was telling rolling process so first process we will see rolling there are two types of rolling one is flat rolling another one is shape rolling uh, so here you can see continuous casting is coming okay ingots are brought okay this is kind of slab this is the slab this is the billet and this is called the bloom okay you can see the difference what is a billet what is a bloom what is a slab slab means uh, it's like a plate kind of structure sheet but higher thickness that is called slab here it is a bulk material with longer length okay the cross section may be slightly square here the cross section is square or rectangle in shape but the length is short here in billet the length will be long you can see these are multi stage uh, processing okay the hot strip is sent through two rollers yesterday i was talking about uh, the sugar cane being crushed and the juice being taken the sugar cane juice being taken so similarly this is called as hot strip okay hot strip then you have you can put it in the oil so that Uh, the temperature is reduced then cold strip you can again roll it into a sheet from slab you are converting it to a sheet okay so the thickness is reduced proportionately the length and the width also uh, increases okay so one side you do hot stripping and another work place you do cold stripping so that you become it becomes a sheet and this another process is called scalp where the material is uh, made into a thinner sheet and you can see two pipes i mean two rollers which is used to convert this sheet into a pipe and the joint is welded here the joint is there where the the sheet touches each surface i mean the it becomes one into small piece and it becomes a tube here you have to do the welding and now again from slab what you can do is you can again roll it into multiple times and make it into steel plates okay the slab can be converted into steel plates if you see the billet so you can see again here from one place that is hot rolled bars that the uh, the billet is converted into a bar hot rolled bar uh, but it is a square bar okay a hot rolled bar is a square bar. from there you can uh, draw it into so further smaller bars okay further smaller bars you can see the uh, drawing process okay it goes inside the this uh, hot rolled bar goes inside this and becomes thin wires thin bars the billet also can be changed into different shape here it's only same uh, square shape square cross section but here the same rod can be from square it can be made into a cylindrical or circular cross section it can be cylindrical rod again from there you can draw wire okay from there you can draw a wire like how regularly this wire drawing process is done like, like this from billet it is rolled and then from there it is went to uh, drawing a process okay and also you can use the same rod to convert into a seamless tube this is a seam tube there is a seam okay uh, if you have played cricket you know what is seam the ball will have uh, two or four uh, parts and they are stitched and that is called the seam okay like that here it is welded this is called the seam but here it is a seamless tube you have a mandrel inside and two rollers which is pushing the material through this mandrel and you will have a uh, hollow tube and bloom also is used for uh, various structural components like rails or i beam or any other sectional components the bloom is used again 
you can see multiple uh, raw i mean multiple uh, rollers all these rollers will have their own purposes and every roller will do its function to convert this billet or slab or bloom into a desired shape and size okay i think it's time we'll stop here i'll take the attendance if there is any doubt uh, in these things you can just ask me and uh, how many of you haven't uh, submitted the assignment by today evening i should try to submit the assignment okay today evening i'll stop receiving the files in google classroom if anybody is having problem in submitting the file using google classroom seek the help of your friend who has already submitted you give your user id password to him and log inside using uh, his computer and you send your file to him maybe he can upload it in the google classroom on your name don't say, uh, upload two files on one single person's name and uh, two files of different students okay uh, you have to give your user id password to your friend and ask him to upload it so this is official id so uh, people cannot misuse it and probably you can trust your friend and you can send it to him or somehow you may be having some internet center nearby your place just go there and upload it in your uh, google classroom the reason why i'm telling google classroom google classroom is i'll i'll show you i'll see how many students have submitted today if I, until 5 o'clock will be there open only 3 people out of 32 have submitted i don't know whether we have only 32 students in class i think more than that but only 32 people have already signed up for this uh, this class others please sign up for this class and <coughs> start giving the assignment only three people have turned in okay calvin karthik and samuel charan sir please right? show the code yeah i'll i have yesterday showed you anyway i'll show you now also so this is the code C B U A I L L. I'll also copy this link, paste it in the chat so that you can. Uh, Sheikh Nawaz it's, has mentioned that. facing lot of network issue uh, uh sorry i am unable to help you but uh, we have to live with this digital india now pandemic india so we cannot help you you have to find a proper network source okay maybe your rooftop or maybe see when uh, i had one one particular week i had to be in a very very remote location and uh, i had to connect with our university for various meetings that week was very very hectic lot of meetings i had to attend all those meetings just before our classes started so we had lot of meetings and unfortunately i got struck in a place a very very remote place where you don't have signal signal forget about the internet the signal is only one point in your bar i mean four bars will be there in that only one point i had to sit on the rooftop to attend to all meetings so at my age if i can climb a rooftop at your age i think you can climb mountains okay so it is up to you to find a, a proper location because this this one i cannot help facing the internet issues i cannot help sorry about it but you have to find and uh, on time if you can come inside i can accept you after time if you come inside we'll be having our class so we may not i may not be able to give accept so and also use your car name i ready so that this acceptance business will not be there for uh, livison richi you have to inform him <clears throat> and when i ask some question you can just unmute your microphone and answer no issues you need not answer here in the chat box okay use this link for joining the class
about the yeah about the assignment uh, three people have joined i mean given it so what happens is i'll just go through it i'll just show you how i grade it i'll share my screen so this is the assignment given by karthik so what i do is i go here check the assignment like this okay i told i don't want any presentation i want a word of word file somebody has downloaded karthik did you download from somewhere this is download a, a very good presentation this i can do it myself no no sir it's a default in the ms hmm? in uh, powerpoint no 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 i wanted a ms word file so i can check the uh, okay anyway so i will check for plagiarism and then i'll be awarding the mark here okay and today evening by evening i'll stop accepting i think when is the last date i told you sir uh, in that it's written due if tomorrow tomorrow yes, yes sir yes sir, the, yes, sir. it's okay tomorrow okay, we'll okay, have tomorrow no i can give you one more extra day that is not at all a problem because it says tomorrow due is tomorrow yes sir mm. thank you sir <laughs> due is tomorrow 4th august that's okay uh, it's not a big thing one day is not a big thing so we'll we'll have this as the uh, due date tomorrow evening let's see let's hope that everybody responds that's what i wanted here i want everyone to submit the reason is easy marks 5 marks or 10 marks usually you get it out of this assignments and why do you want to waste that that is my question i always think that when there is an easy are easily available something you should always opt for it uh, whether it is good or bad then we'll think it later about it but when there is an easy taking for 10 marks or 5 marks for this assignment why should we waste it and why do we want to procrastinate that is uh, postpone it to next day or tomorrow or day after tomorrow just do it on the day with when the as i i saw one guy i don't know i don't remember the name one guy responding on the same day he gave me the uh, p i mean the word file i said i gave some corrections and he carried out the correction immediately and sent me the file i told him to upload it in google classroom i, I think uh, who was that i don't remember mm. i'll check pardon is it calvin so Actually, I had a problem with my laptop, so that I was not able to do it in the Word file. Okay. So you have written it. Yes, sir. Uh, I appreciate that because this is more of uh, physical work than of uh, mental work. So you are ready to do something physical. I appreciate that also. Good. Thank you, sir. i think the that person did not upload it please upload word file don't upload the pdf ppt file of course our channel already have submitted leave them others when you are doing do it with word file okay sir it's me sir samuel charan uh, samuel sir okay you made it as a ppt yes sir why you may you sent me a word file same file you can upload it no okay. i thought presentation is good so upload it okay. like see i don't expect presentation presentations are not at all required what i wanted is to create some what to say some kind of repository of notes okay out of all these things the good ones i can compile and give it to you as notes everybody can read because at this moment i cannot prepare notes and send it to you uh, if you are here i can prepare notes but now since we are far away we cannot even interact properly so it's like helping your own hand okay and also you will learn how to create notes right so of course i have shared book you can also take content from the book also anyway once you have shared it leave it don't change it others now when you are submitting submit it as word file that will be good for checking plagiarism and other stuff okay right so right so you can just leave we'll see on friday unfortunately i'm having lot of meetings on fridays i should uh, 
check on my times if there is any doubt you can ask me otherwise you can leave thank you thank you all thank you sir sir can thank i submit sir then it works no 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 not required leave it leave it thank you sir yeah thank you sir don't do any rework only one time you have to work and do it correctly that's it sir i had that in word file also sir first i did it in word itself want you change it but uh, i'm not bothered if you are uh, changing no issues we can do it okay sir Okay. Sir, yeah, there's no problem in writing and send it to you, right? No problem, Kevin. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, because of my power problem, I have attend my class in my personal mail, sir. Will you take okay. my attendance? Will you consider my attendance? Attendance I have already taken. No, using this tool, I have taken no problem.